Hi, I'm Jeff Potma from the CBN Weekly Interventional Update. I'm joined by Dr. Chris Cannon. Our focus of attention today is the ACC AHA 2008 Statement on Performance Measures and Reperfusion Therapy Dr. by Dr. Masudo and colleagues, published in Jack uh, Online uh, in November of 2008. No question, there's a tremendous national interest in the performance measures that have focused on the timeliness of reperfusion therapy for patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. From 1994, we had the Cooperative Cardiovascular Project. By 2000, 2001, we'd realized that we had actually a median door to balloon time of 107 minutes, improved by 19 minutes from two years previously. The Joint Commission and, and, uh, and CMS have published a line criteria that uses the median door to balloon times as benchmarks now at 90 minutes for our performance. And of course, we have the ACC AHA performance measure guidelines and the recently published focused guidelines update for the management of patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. I think the most important uh, published manuscript that has contributed to this is the systems changes that we have made to rapidly treat our patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. This Sentinel paper by Dr. Bradley and her colleagues suggested that the emergency medical system activation of the catheterization laboratory saved 15 minutes, that the emergency department staff activation of the cath lab saved eight minutes, the code STEMI beeper saved 13 minutes, all focused on very rapid response times by the interventional cardiologist. Very important feedback from the ED to the catheterization laboratory about how we were all doing. Well, this has then led to a number of stakeholders who now have used markers of reperfusion to grade our performance. The AHA ACC focused update guidelines suggested it's not just the door to balloon, but the door to the time to first medical contact to balloon time of less than 90 minutes that's important. We have CMS and Joint Commission measures now using median door to balloon times with benchmarks of less than 90 minutes. These are published on hospital compare. And of course, we know we have the NCDR, AHA get with the guidelines and the ACC D2B alliances to also focus our attention on these system approaches to reduce the time that the patient uh, is, is having ongoing myocardial ischemia. The critical piece to this is the EKG interpretation. It's done from the medical record. It's done after the patient's been treated. Any misinterpretations of the initial EKG may not be included in the analyses. And it's only the EKG that's obtained closest to the arrival to the hospital that's used for qualification. That's important because in hospital, EKG STEMIs are not included. There are other key performance. Let me highlight a few of these from, the, from Dr. Masuda's um, uh, performance uh, publications. If a patient's enrolled in the clinical trials, they're not included in these, uh, in these performance measures. If they have comfort measures only documented within the first 24 hours of admission, if the patient's received a prior thrombolytic a a a um, agent, or importantly, if there were patient-related reasons that caused a delay. They could be social religious, religious reasons or an initial concern about the performance of reperfusion therapy. These patients are not included in these performance measure analyses. It's important to note now that it's not just the door to balloon, it's actually the door to first device. Could be an aspiration thrombectomy device, could be a stent uh, that stops the clock. It's important that there's synchronization of our timing throughout our entire hospital system to make sure that those differences in the timings on clocks in the emergency department and the cath lab do not uh, impact on changes of these, um, of these measures. And importantly, it's not the time the vessel reperfuses. It's not the time that, uh, that we see that there's patents, patency within the vessel that's important. It's actually when the first device crosses a lesion, uh, that is the time marker that we use. So it's really considered a measure of process rather than a measure of coronary flow. We've got some unresolved issues. Um, we have to understand better about whether all patients who are appropriate candidates for, th for reperfusion therapy have received it. We have to integrate how the first medical contact to reperfusion time is gonna impact upon these guidelines. And we have to understand better how to, how to account for patients who develop ST segment elevations while they're in the hospitals. There is some bright news in the future. It's probably with the, with the availability of electronic medical records. Uh, those electronic medical records allow us to standardize our data collection and data abstraction times. And importantly, the newer electronic health records need to have these performance measures included in them. It may, makes it much more efficient for all of us to collect this important data. And finally, just a comment about, uh, about our registries. 
the AC, uh, C, NCDR and HA get with the guidelines of registries are incredibly important because they allow us to collect real-time data, real-time data that we can provide back to our clinicians about how we're doing. And that monitoring then gives us a jump start upon whether there's CMS Joint Commission measures we're going to be seeing published um, on our practices um, uh, will be over the next year or two. Newer registries sh should, in should incorporate all of these important existing performance measures in order to have more of a, um, a standardized approach to measuring performance measures in patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. I'd like to turn things over for just a comment or two from my partner and friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Cannon, who's going to give us the non-interventionalist perspective on these performance measures for reperfusion therapy. Chris? Thanks, Jeff. I want to pick up on two points you made. Uh, first is the importance of registries and the action get with the guidelines registry as well as the CATH PCI registry of the NCDR will both be tracking the door to balloon times and be weaving in the issue of transfer patients as Mission Lifeline becomes uh, a key focus of the AHA and the ACC. And in this way, we can try and broaden the reach of improving door to balloon times overall. The other key point is that, uh, as you pointed out, if you're participating in a clinical trial, you won't count towards the overall door-to-balloon time. And so if getting consent takes an extra 5-10 minutes and that happens to cross the magic 90 minutes, uh, that won't count against your hospital. And so this could, should open the door to doing research in parallel with these overall improvements in door-to-balloon times in quality improvement initiatives. Thanks, Chris. Those are, uh, those are great comments. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining us uh, with, uh, for on CBN for this very brief update on our new uh, reperfusion markers, uh, and I hope that you'll be able to use these, this information in your clinical practices. Have a question or comment about a CBN story? Send us an email at cbnfeedback at acc.org.